Hey everyone, here's another video about abstract classes. Now in the previous video where we introduced you to the idea of abstract classes, we had used this project here uh, that had to do with shape, shapes, uh, circles and parallelograms and stuff. And then we'd shown you how we sort of transformed it a bit to end up looking like this, abstract shape. And then the class is building off it and just the basic idea of what abstract actually means. What I want to do in this video is just sort of emphasize this abstract idea by taking a project that we've been using all along, this one here, the teacher-student one, and just showing you how a programmer trying to do basically the same program might tackle the organization and the relationships among the classes very differently. And that it's not sort of a one-way fits all when you're trying to design your projects and decide what should extend what and what should be abstract or even to use abstracts at all. So here's just another take on this one here. And this one is designed like this. And I'll just sort of come back to this in a second, but this one is saved in the project in your example folder called Student Teacher 2. And what this one does is this one actually turns the student class into an abstract class. So let's just go off the big diagram, the big picture here, to show you what they've done. So what this programmer has decided to do is they decided, you know what, I'm going to have two types of students for now with the possibility for more. I'm going to have a regular student and I'm going to have an exchange student. Now there's going to be a couple of methods that they both share and a couple of fields that they both share. So here in the abstract student, I'm going to code as much as they can to get the common code done. So things like abstract student has a name, age, address, a student ID, and a list of marks. Any type of student is going to have that stuff. Then they also code in get address, get name, get age, set address, set name, and set age. That way regular students will get it and exchange students will get it. But what they don't code is they don't code talk, get average mark, or get mark. Now, we'll sort of make a point on this one afterwards to say whether this is a good idea or not. And we'll refine. So you'll see here talk. The fact that they make talk abstract, and just to show you here, in the abstract student class this time, is talk has been declared abstract, no code. There's those ones that are coded. And there's this three that they expect you to implement differently for your different types of student that you're going to extend off of this class and make. So they're sort of implying I want to require all students to have a talk method for whatever reason. They want to require all students to have double get average mark. And they want to require all students to have mark, get mark, integer x. But they've left them abstract because they can't code them at this point because they know the subclasses will do these three methods differently. And so if we pop back to the big picture, you'll see here that I have talk, get average, and get mark. And in regular student, what do they code? They code a talk, they coded get average mark, and they coded get mark. If they didn't, they couldn't be a class because regular student extends student. And to actually be a full class, you have to have everything fully coded, which means get those three coded, and then you're good. Exchange student basically did the same thing. It coded talk, get average, and get mark, and it also added two extras of its own. Now, it wasn't required to have these two. That has nothing to do with abstract class student, but those are just two extra methods that they want the exchange student class to have. Now, the overall result when this is all done, is you can peek at the class. You've got your student. You got your regular student. And there's those methods coded in. You got your exchange student, which remember the get average mark is done differently. Talk is done differently. But get mark, when you actually look at the code, get mark in exchange student and get mark in regular student are actually exactly the same. So in a way, this programmer's made a bad decision here. They should have taken get mark and just added it, sorry, down in here 
not made that an abstract method at all because the code is exactly the same. When you make things abstract, generally you're implying that the subclasses are doing those methods differently. Okay, maybe they do them the same though, and this is okay, but it's generally implying that different subclasses will implement them in different ways. So, how does this end up changing our runner or our program that uses these classes? Maybe what are some pros and some cons there? Well, let's just take a look at the runner here. Here's the runner. Here's one thing you can't do anymore. You can't go, student Andrew is a new student. Student is an abstract class. It's incomplete. There's methods not coded there that are declared abstract. It can't create one in memory, right? You can't instantiate a new instance in memory of an abstract class. So that line doesn't work anymore. But you can do this. You can say Andrew regular student. You can make a new regular student. You can do that. You can do that. You can even do this student. Even though that's an abstract class, Bob is a reference to type student. This technically isn't making a new student. I'm making a new regular student. That's good. And this memory address points to that regular student. Because if you remember our inheritance, regular students are or is a student. An exchange student is a student. So they can be substituted in. And so these lines down here are totally fine. Uh, some other stuff that I'll just sort of quickly touch upon here is no longer can I have the teachers in there, right? Because before I had a realist, a person, and teacher was a person, student was a person, etc. They could all go in there. Now I can't do that. I'd be more limited to this. I could make an array list a student called students. And after I make it, I could add in regular students and exchange students. And even Bob, who's just a student, and Jenny is just a student, could be added in there because they all qualify as student types. Um, what would you do for the teachers? You probably have to have a different list to keep track of the teachers. Or what you'll learn in a little bit is you'll learn there's actually another option coming up in a future video uh, that has to do with interfaces. And interfaces are going to give us another option, how you can organize your classes and your code and your structure and your relationships. So we'll see you there. Uh, try a few practice questions on this, and hopefully they go well.